This is Kids Barbecue Championship. Each episode, four different kid grillers yes. test their skills in two themed barbecue challenges. Unbelievable. My palate is like... With the chance to take home the crown and $10,000. Oh, my God. Money, money, money. Tonight, the kids will put their skills to the test. You need to package this up and sell it yep. and pay for your college. Using the holy grail of meats. Pork. Yeah. Some will fly high. They look beautiful. While others will get left in the mud. This is so bad. I am 13. I cannot as they all fight Turning out of time. to bring home the bacon. Three, oh two, hands up! Ah! Welcome to the ranch, and it's really cool. There's mountains, horses. I love being outside, so this is the perfect place to cook. Welcome, everybody, to Kids Barbecue Championship. Today, you'll be grilling your way through two intense rounds of barbecue competition. Don't hold back on bringing us your best, boldest barbecue flavors. Because only one of you can win the title of Kids Barbecue Champion and $10,000. <laughs> I don't know what I would do with it. You can, like, rent a car for that much money. All right, I hope you kids are ready to pig out because today we're celebrating the holy grail of meat. Pork! Oh, my God! Yes! Yeah. But there is one kind of pork that everyone loves. I, I know what it is. Bacon. Yes! Yeah. Yeah. I love that reaction. <laughs> For your first challenge, we're not asking you to just put bacon on a dish. That's way too easy. Oh. We want an appetizer that's wrapped in bacon, and we also want an appetizer that's stuffed with bacon. All right, so we have 30 minutes on the clock, and your time starts now! Oh, sorry, this is like a bun. Got some good-looking... Pork, pork products over the there, The right? bacon? Oh, come on, y'all. Don't get any better than that. No. Awesome. If I could have bacon with every meal, well, I would totally do it. The challenge with wrapping bacon is you can't see what you wrap in it. The bacon could be, like, super crunchy, and then the thing inside could be, like, raw. The key to good bacon is getting it nice and crispy. If you undercook it, it's like rubber. If you overcook it, it's like chalk. Here we go. Ooh. I'm going to make a bacon-wrapped pineapple bite and a land and sea BLT. So I'm making salmon, and it's going to have a, a, a loaded bacon guacamole. I'm going to slice it down the middle so I can stuff it with the guacamole, tomatoes, and bacon. Salmon can be pretty fishy, so I'm going to add the creaminess of the avocado, the saltiness of the bacon, and find the perfect balance in the middle. Bacon is so good, you could wrap a cricket in it and I would eat it. That would be disgusting, actually. I live in Northern California in a small town called Placerville, in the middle of nowhere. Where I'm from, it's all about going outside, so... I like to go to the river and catch crawdads and swim and fish. And One of our favorite things to do is to barbecue outside. Now for the start of the show, we're going to be putting on the chicken lollipops. I like to cook all different types of foods, but the thing they have in common is they all have big mountainous flavors. I really like to barbecue. I compete with my dad a lot, and we've won a first a grand champion and people's choice a few times, too. If I can beat adults barbecuing, I think I can beat a few kids. <laughs> Working with salmon is a huge risk because fish can fall apart so easily. But I'm just going to hope to God that it pays off. Okay. Taylor's already smoking over there. There's so many things you can do with pork. I mean, you can literally cook it from the 
Rooter to the Tooter. For this challenge, I am making a bacon and smoked Gouda stuffed beef slider with a bacon wrapped sea scallop with a cast iron corn and bacon. I live with my dad. He's a rancher and we do a lot of beef, so that's where the beef sliders came in. And my mom also lives in Naples, Florida, and I thought that the scallops would be a way that I could show my love of seafood. I've always been interested in cooking. I've had help from two local chefs in Naples. They have helped me develop more skills. I'm gonna pop that baby on the grill. This is what you want, those beautiful, beautiful marks. So now I'm just cutting my corn. I'm just taking the kernels off so I can throw it in my cast iron skillet to get nice color on it for my cast iron corn and bacon. I know this will be delicious. You should just write me that $10,000 check right now. I'm just so excited. I want to know what Hayden's doing over Hayden. there. Hayden, how we doing over there, my man? Pretty good. A little flustered, but good. Flustered. He also has mayonnaise, which I'm never mad at mayonnaise. Oh, no. It's like the glue of the country. <laughs> You're funny, Eddie. <laughs> I am making bacon-wrapped grilled cheese with a tomato dipping sauce and bacon cheesy dip stuffed jalapenos. I came up with the bacon-wrapped grilled cheese because when I was younger, my mom would always make grilled cheese, and this is just like a contribute to that. And then... Yeah, sorry. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> I started cooking when I was six, and I've been doing barbecue for about two years now. I just put my pork tenderloin on the grill with my seven spice rub, and it's going to be delicious. I've been to a lot of competitions with my grandpa. I went to a class, and they gave me the certified judge pen, so when I'm old enough, I can just go straight into judging. I don't have to take a class. My culinary style is taking average barbecue and elevating it. I am ecstatic for this competition. Woohoo! Allison, how we doing? Good. I am feeling very confident. I love working with pork. I am making rooster bullets, which are pork chops wrapped in onion and bacon and I'm making cream cheese, bacon, sausage, dip stuffed mushrooms. Rooster bullets can be with any type of meat. One time I even made them with gator. Right now I'm keeping up my pork chops and putting them in the soy sauce and wrap them in bacon. Soy sauce is a quick marinade because it's salty and it seasons it and it also tenderizes the meat. These are ready. I love to compete. I show market hogs at the state fair. I think what's going to make me stand out in this competition is I'm really good with flavors and being able to put stuff together on the spot. Ever since I was little, I loved grilling with my dad. There's no way that the other competitors know as much about pork as I do. How's it going over here? Great. And this beautiful cream cheese concoction is going to go into mushrooms that I saw? Yes, ma'am. And I'm just going to grill these so they get yeah. softer. Wonderful. 15 minutes. I'm feeling very good on time. I have a lot of my stuff ready. This is not going to be the nicest thing in the world. OK. The next thing I'm working on is my bacon wrapped pineapple. I have the pineapple with two pieces of gouda wrapped in bacon. I'm going to put it on the grill and crisp it up. I like that it has the sweetness of the pineapple, the saltiness of the bacon. So I put the pineapple on the grill, and then I look over, and my salmon is sticking to the grill. This is the worst thing that could happen. This is so bad. So the wheels are falling off this wagon. I have no clue what to do.
everything's falling apart. I don't know what's happening here, but this salmon is sticking to the grill. Jacob over here, he didn't grease that great. You got to take a towel, get some oil on it, and rub those. Yes, yeah, so it's not sticking. Yeah. God, this is so bad. I'm going to go to Jacob. Feels like he's flustered. Well, hello there, Jacob. How's it going? Uh, not great. It's sticking a little bit. Okay, so... It's not working. No, no, no. Take a deep breath. Here's what you can do. If your salmon is sticking, mm -hmm. you can oil down this grate, and that'll help. Or you have that skin... So put the skin down first, because if it comes up, lane. it'll be no big deal. Thank God for Damaris. She's giving me advice. And you're wrapping that in bacon. That looks great. Yeah. Well, let's just hope this is my saving grace. It will be. Don't worry. I'm not that great under pressure, but I really think I might be back on track. Okay, that's working. Ten minutes! Okay. and smell good as stuff beef slider. Well, hello there, Taylor. Hello, Miss Damaris. So I see the scallops wrapped. That's your yes, wrap component. Yes, ma'am. And you're stuffed. What are we stuffing? I am doing stuffed beef sliders. Are you making sure every one of those is seasoned? Yes, ma'am. That's the place that people always, like, skimp on it. Get that flavor in there. Yes, ma'am. Yeah, you are incredibly poised right now. Yes, ma'am. Oh, you're going to take my job 100%. <laughs> I'm out of a job, people. No, ma'am. It's good. It's done. I'm working on my bacon cheesy dip stuffed jalapenos. I'm just taking the, the ribs out and a little bit of the seeds. Then I'm going to stuff them with the bacon dip. I want a little bit of kick, but I don't want, like so much that they get overpowered. Take this, lose that, put this. I feel super confident about the stuffing because, I mean, I stuff things like all the time. Whatever I can find, I want to try and stuff. Okay. All right, my little kid barbecues, I want to introduce you to your guest judge today. Deeper Q, come on in. This woman is the most influential woman in barbecue in the world. Period. 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 Good to see you again. <gasps> I mean, she is the queen. It's good to be here again. I told her all about you. Yes. I feel excited, but she kind of scares me because she's not afraid to tell people that their food is terrible. We knew you were coming today, so we gave these kids a porkalicious <gasps> yeah, pork, oh. it's pork delicious around here today, and I know you know a little bit about pork. Just a wee bit. Just, 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 a, just a wee bit about a, pork. Just a wee bit about it. Very excited to be here today. <laughs> right now, I'm taking my mushrooms off the grill, then I will start stuffing them with their filling for my stuffed appetizers. I am stuffing the mushrooms with the sausage and bacon cream cheese dip. Mushrooms pair good with bacon because of the saltiness and the cream cheese acts as a binding agent. Kind of reminds me of something I would do at home. Already, I am almost finished plating and I still have plenty of time on the clock. You all done? Yes, I am. Right now, I just see brown. So think about putting some greens on there, you know, where there's some fresh herbs or something like that. Looks good, though. So I run to the pantry. I decided to add some fresh thyme to my mushrooms to brighten it up. Thyme has, like, a nice, light, earthy flavor. So with my rooster bullets, I see that the bacon is cooked perfectly. Just hoping that the pork chop isn't overcooked. Three minutes! My mind is going a million miles per hour. This time is counting down second by second. And every second counts. The guacamole is done, and now I just need to get that salmon off the grill. Don't leave me hanging. You don't leave me hanging, man? Well, let's just hope this is my saving grace. I don't have time to stuff it. I'm just going to have to put the guacamole on the side with the tomato, make it look nice. Here we go. Ooh, nice and pretty. I have got to get this plating done. 
jalapeno and then bacon wrapped to grilled cheese with a tomato dipping sauce something very comforting about this grilled cheese but i wish you would have found a way to maybe cook yeah. the bacon beforehand and then wrap it yeah. so we can get a crispy piece of bacon and not just all that fat i love that you grilled the bread for your sandwich and you use that flavor of the grill so well if you could package this and put it into a bag of crispy grilled cheese, I would buy it in a heartbeat, okay? Kind of a play on a popper type. Yeah. Woo! I got a little kick to it. Yeah. And <laughs> the filling is good, though. I tried to get the veins and the seeds out as much as possible. I unfortunately got the jalapeno that had all the seeds still in it. It's okay. One of the things I always do, though, is after I scrape out the seeds, I actually always soak mine in water. Okay. And I'll actually kind of give you a little more insurance that it's oh. not going to be hot, okay? Good tip. Good job, Hayden. Great start. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. I didn't mean to blow her taste buds off, but... Ooh. Allison, this looks phenomenal. Wow. It does. So this must have been easy for you because you know a little bit about pigs, huh? Yes, sir. <laughs> I thought you're not going to elaborate? <laughs> She's like, let the food talk for itself. <laughs> what do we have in front of us? I made a rooster bullet, which is pork chop wrapped in onion and bacon, and a bacon, sausage, and cream cheese stuffed mushroom. This looks phenomenal. Mmm. I think you really embraced the challenge. You had a few minutes left over, and the way that you used those minutes was really, really smart. Without the time, this, like, stuffed mushroom would have been too heavy. Yeah. And fresh thyme brightened up that whole little bite for me. I love a pork chop, but my pork is a little overcooked. My pork chop is, is, it's over. So maybe if you had cooked the bacon a little bit, cooked the onion a little bit, and then wrapped it, I might not have ended up with dry pork chop. I love the texture of my onions in there. It's soft, but it still has some integrity. It's not slimy. Yeah. You know, which sometimes happens when it's next to a meat and, and a high fat item. I gotta tell you, overall, like, this is really impressive. Thank you. I'm Good grateful. job, Allison. Great start. Thank you. I'm really glad that I took Eddie's advice and added fresh thyme to add that much more to my dish. Taylor! <laughs> Just looking at my plates, I can tell that they're really impressed. The first thing that came out of Eddie's mouth was... Visually, this dish is, like, phenomenal. I am so excited right now. What do you have in front of us? So today I have prepared for you a bacon and smoked gouda stuffed beef slider and then a bacon wrapped sea scallop and a cast iron corn and bacon. I love the char that you got on the corn and that cast iron skillet. Spectacular. Thank you. I think it's the best thing on this plate, Thank actually. You. Hands down. And I tasted everything on your plate from your burger to your scallops to your corn. Something's missing. Missing salt. Yep, yeah. 100%. Are you kidding me right now? I couldn't have just picked some up and sprinkled it over 
the top. A whole lot. I tasted everything on your plate. It's missing salt. Yep. Yeah. 100%. The fortunate thing is you did stuff it with that, that bacon and that gouda, so it kind of saved it a little bit. Yes, sir. But for me, in a burger, any kind of meat, I like to really season that, that outside, that crust, and put it on there. So, conceptually and visually, it is... Spot on. Very, very pretty. Thank you. Gorgeous. Thank yeah, you so well done. Much. Thank you. This is a bacon challenge and not a salt challenge. Hopefully that's not a deal breaker, but I'm feeling super nervous right now. Jacob, what would you okay. make for us? But first, yeah. I need to tell you a joke. Oh, oh my gosh. Okay. Where do Russians eat? Uh, I don't know. Fast food, because they're always Russian. <laughs> So what do you have? What'd you make for it? Okay, so I made a uh, grilled salmon, and then I made a spicy guacamole, and then we have a pineapple bacon bite. Enjoy. Yeah, that's some pretty salmon. So was this salmon actually supposed to be stuffed? Um, it was going to, but this is my second time ever cooking salmon. This your second time cooking yeah. salmon? The, the first... texture of wow. it is you perfect. Wow, you nailed it. <laughs> Thank you. Well, my pineapple and bacon was delicious. Thank you. I wish I had had about four times the amount. Your salmon is so beautifully cooked. I was shocked to hear that you'd only cooked it twice. But I think it is one of the ugliest dishes here today. I'm going to say that right out. Presentation skills, not so great. Flavors, though, big. We're huge. You should be very proud of yourself. Great job, all right? We're going to bounce back. Okay, thank you. I know it doesn't look good, but it does taste good. Hopefully they gave me a second chance to, so I can show them what I got. That was tough, right? Yes, yes sir. Nice yes. You know, this was a really tight competition. Each one of you and your plates brought something special to the table today. But going home, after this first round will be Jacob. Jacob, I just want to tell you, keep cooking, my man. Don't ever give up, you understand? Yeah. Well, first we have to say goodbye, all right? Right. Thank you, Jacob. I'm proud of myself because I took a risk. I did something I'm not used to doing, and I pulled it off. Coming back for redemption. Congratulations to the three kids still standing. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> but it is time to heat things up as we take the celebration of pork to the next level. Ooh. Is there ever too much pig on a plate? Never. Nope. And I am hungry. No pressure. <laughs> Not at all. You'll each be making a dish using two pork products from our delicious pork pantry. Plus, we all know that pork goes great with fruit. So we want to see a fruit element on your plate. Ooh, yes, something sweet. You'll have 60 minutes to create your pork feast. Whew, the heat is on. All right, so remember, whoever wins this challenge will be crowned this week's Kids Barbecue Champion and walk away with $10,000, right? Oh, yes. Uh, are you ready for this? Yes, sir. Because your time starts now. Sorto sage, white sugar. What do I need? So you have competed in competitions with pork for years. Yeah. What is the safest, best, foolproof, what's the pork to use? Pork tenderloin. Pork tenderloin. Pork tenderloin. Pork tenderloin. Especially when you have 60 minutes. Yeah. You have to understand how the protein strands work. Mm -hmm. Are they super tight, which means they're super lean? Mm -hmm. Are they really loose, which is like they are the ribs, need more time? It takes a long time to break down. 
It's nope. either low or slow or hot and fast. Yeah. That's it. Exactly. All righty. So today I am making a pork chop with a cherry and apricot gastric and some cast iron Brussels sprouts with some bacon and then some lardons. Cherry and apricot gastric. Get it, girl. Get it, girl. I didn't even know what that word meant. Girl, you better work. To make this gastric because it brings a nice acidity and sweetness to the dish. A gastric is just basically a vinegar reduction, and I'm gonna throw my fruit in there. I also chopped some sage up, so I figured it would give a nice flavor to the dish. I've got this in the bag. Feeling good. Allison, what kind of pork you got, sweetie? I've got baby back ribs and bacon. Okay. For this challenge, I am making my signature baby back ribs, bacon wrapped asparagus, and pineapple made in orange coleslaw. Right now, I am making my injection for the ribs, which is soy sauce, pineapple juice, rosemary, garlic powder, and onion powder. My plan for the ribs is I'm going to um, get them started as soon as possible. Injecting my ribs is going to act kind of like a tenderizing agent. This challenge, I need to make sure that my pork is cooked to perfection. Are you concerned about them getting done in 50 minutes? Uh, what you? I think she just said this ain't my first rodeo. Yeah, she has I think say. I heard it say. I'm not sure. Oh, oh, that's what she said. My you can see your yeah. way out of it. <laughs> I'm taking a big risk by making ribs in just 60 minutes. But if I stay focused, I'm confident I can pull it off. Hayden, what kind of pork you got? I got a uh, pork tenderloin. Pork and, tenderloin, and? And uh, I'm going to put pancetta and green beans. And then I'm going to make a peach salsa. I like that. Mm -hmm. yeah. So for my green beans, I start cutting my pancetta into cubes and then putting them in the cast iron skillet. How I'm making this up kale is like, instead of using bacon, I'm using pancetta. And also I'm doing like a grilled peach salsa and I'm using like fresh peaches. In my opinion, peaches and pork, they go hand in hand. When you grow peaches, it tastes like heaven. I'm not from Georgia, but South Carolina's not that far, so I know a thing or two about peaches. That was loud. Uh, my piece of bacon just fell through. It's okay. You only have to use two cuts of pork in this challenge, but I'm really gonna wow these judges and use three. I'm going to include my Brussels and bacon, my pork chop, and some lard on. A lardon is basically just a big piece of crispy bacon, and it is delicious. I am so excited to show these to the judges. You are awesome. Allison's ribs? I am a little concerned. Let me explain to you why, okay? This is an actual time to call at desk. Yeah. She's not been given an extra amount of hours. Well, what's concerning me is she keeps opening up her grill. You can literally see the heat. Leaving. Oh, my gosh. Those ribs are not going to cook. Three surprising ways to up your grilling game with foil. After this, all you need to make these delicious snacks is some foil. Layer up your favorite sandwich on Italian bread. Place a heavy brick on top for a homemade panini press. Make popcorn and olives in a simple homemade parcel. And in no time, you'll have snack time. Allison's ribs? I am a little concerned. Oh my gosh. I'm going to Allison. Allison. 
You're making something that's near and dear to my heart. I saw a huge slab of ribs. You have such a big piece of meat inside this grill. Mm -hmm. Leave it closed. Okay. Okay? I have always cooked my baby back ribs to perfection, but I usually cook them for longer periods of time. So I wrap them in foil so they can cook all the way through. That's so smart. You're thinking. Yeah. With that $10,000 brain. Oh. My peaches and my pancheters on the grill. Whenever I make these green beans for my family, they always, like, fight over the pancetta. When you cube it up and it gets all crispy and goodness, and they're just, like, little pork nuggets. They're just so good and, like, just all, like, crispy and, mmm, just makes me all warm inside. I'm adding chicken stock to my green beans because it adds a salty depth of flavor and then I cover it in foil for them to steam. I'm feeling great. I have my gastric and my Brussels sprouts on the grill. So the next thing I start working on is seasoning my pork chops. I definitely need to make sure all my things are seasoned correctly and make sure everything is good. I'm using salt, pepper, and cumin because I love the warm, comforting flavor of cumin. And I really don't want to have under-seasoned pork like my last round. So now I'm just going to put my pork chops on the grill. The trickiest thing about working with pork, especially pork chops, is making sure that they're perfectly cooked so they do not dry out. I am looking for perfectly marked pork chops. That is my plan. 30 minutes. Keep watching those, okay? Yes, ma'am. Great. Oh, God. What are you making, Allison? I am working on my bacon wrapped asparagus right now. I like wrapping my vegetables in bacon because it just adds something different to the flavors. If you're wrapping something, you have to make sure that it's evenly wrapped so you don't have uncooked bacon. Where I come from in Florida, you can't have barbecue without coleslaw. It is shredded cabbage, mandarin oranges, grilled pineapple. This coleslaw is something that I've made up from different family recipes, hoping that the judges will love it. I guess I can start rubbing this. Cumin. Where's cumin? Cumin. Hayden not only grabbed the pork tenderloin, but he grabbed every single spice <laughs> that we have in the pantry. Oh, yeah. We're talking about barbecuing, and what makes barbecue your own is your, is your rubs. Yeah. That's what makes it taste different. It's my secret spice rub. So don't look. The secret ingredient in my spice rub is because it's more spicier than regular. I don't really care for adding like regular rubs. Are you going to tell us the secret? Um, love. The pork tenderloin doesn't have a lot of fat. So it doesn't take as long as other meats. Pork tenderloin can, is easily overcooked, but I just try and keep an eye on it, and I've done this many times before, so I'm confident. I cannot overcook this pork tenderloin because then it will just make me so upset, and then it will just want me to, like, quit barbecuing forever. Okay, I got it. Ten minutes left, my little barbecue chefs. Smells amazing. Ooh, that's good. My pork chops have some decent grill marks, so immediately I start pulling them off the grill and let them set on a tin pan. But time is running out. I look over at my Brussels sprouts. Oh, no. Oh, my brush sprouts, they went a little long, so they got burnt. 
I'm just nervous that the judges won't like that, so I'm going to incorporate some of these in there if they get cooked in time. It's my worst enemy is time. I'm trying not to freak out. pieces in there that I can use. I think my best bet would be is maybe cut some of these up and throw them in the fryer. I don't know. I'll try. Make sure you're thinking over there, Taylor. Yes, sir. Thank you. Think. Always have a backup plan now. I was really concerned when Taylor said that her Brussels sprouts were over. They look a little smushy. She's adding some fried ones, so hopefully it's going to help with the texture. I need to turn this off because they're getting too hot. I take my green beans and manchetta off and they look disgusting. They're all shriveled up. <sighs> that didn't work. I taste the green beans and they're overdone. So I'm freaking out a little bit. Come on. So I think on my feet. So I'm making a new batch of um, beans. At this point, I just gotta go for it. Cutting it a little close, so. Six minutes. There's Allison. She's glazing her ribs. Oh, yes, she's she meat is. meat side down, bone side up. So it's almost like a cabinet yeah. that's filling with flavor. Yep. Exactly. The truth is, is they, they do look really <laughs> good. Yeah. I know. I ain't even gonna lie. That's <laughs> what happened? I have no idea. They were white a few minutes ago. They in. look right. beautiful. You have less than five minutes left. Ooh, sweaty hands. Taylor's got Brussels sprouts in the deep fryer, which is great, but it's not a deep fried contest. It's a barbecue contest. I am running out of time. And I overhear the judges talking. Is she bringing barbecue yes. flavor? Oh my goodness. Yep, I have enough time to make my barbecue sauce. So I'm gonna make an Asian barbecue sauce. It just consists of some ketchup, some apple cider vinegar, a little bit of sriracha for a kick. I'm thinking to myself, it needs something else. So I just grabbed some sesame oil and poured it all over. It smells amazing. We got one minute left until somebody wins that $10,000. I gotta check my pork. Pork, pork, pork. So I took my pork and it's at 145. Yes! It's good. It's done. I can see the light from the end of the tunnel. Perfect. It's looking pretty good. Here we go. Ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two. second round dish and I feel 110% better than I did in the first round, but I'm still a little nervous about the green beans. The only thing I'm worried about is Allison. I mean, she made ribs in an hour. How do you even do that? Hayden, what's up, my man? Hello. You were challenged with making a feast with two pork products, your signature side, and fruit. What did you do for us? I have made for you my secret barbecue raw pork tenderloin. On top of that is a grilled peach salsa, 
and then on the side there is green beans with pancetta. The rub on the pork tenderloin is absolutely, completely balanced. And that is, I think, the highest compliment you can give to a rub. I'm so proud of you and this pork tenderloin. You did a phenomenal job on cooking and grilling. It's still just absolutely just the lightest tinge of pink. You should celebrate that right there. But I wanted a little more of your salsa because my salsa had only one tiny little piece of, of fruit in it, and then most of it was onion. The pancetta is delicious. You were not afraid to get it crispy, and I love that. You have some variations on cookness of the green yeah. beans. Some of them are very well done, and some of them are still al dente. Anytime I feel like you serve green beans that are under like that, they need some type of vinaigrette because I think of like a salad. But all in all, I think you did some very good things on this plate. Yes, sir. I'm super proud of myself for cooking for Diva Q, and she loves my pork. So I just got to give myself a pat on the back. Allison, what did you do for us? Today I've made barbecue baby back ribs, bacon wrapped asparagus, and mandarin pineapple coleslaw. Allison, across the board, you nailed every single bit of flavor. Your development, your understanding of seasoning, it is really high for anyone especially someone that is not even a grown-up. <laughs> like, that's unbelievable. <laughs> this coleslaw is, I'm serious, phenomenal. Yes, thank you. Like, you need to package this up and sell it. <laughs> yeah. Pay for your college. <laughs> now the bacon-wrapped asparagus. You have a piece that's crispy, then you have a little piece that's nothing but fat. I like to kind of pre-cook the bacon just a little bit to ensure that we get crispness on all sides. Really good flavor, though. Well, I have to say, we have some absolute issues. I, big challenges with the ribs, unfortunately. The flavor is amazing, but, I mean, unfortunately, they're under. You know, they needed a, a, a lot more time on that grill. You had lots of other pork options uh, to work with. You just needed a little more time. This is a disaster. Ribs, I gotta talk about your ribs. They needed a lot more time on that grill. And, you know, and we were concerned the whole time because you kept opening up the grill. And every time you do that, you're losing all that heat. You know what I mean? And obviously, that's what you need to get those ribs mm -hmm. nice and tender. But the flavor, spot on. Thank you. The judges tell me that my ribs are a bit underdone, but the flavors were awesome. So I think I still have a chance. What's going on, T? So what did you make for us? In this dish, I actually have three different pork components, Brussels and bacon, a grilled pork chop with a dried apricot and cherry gastrique, and some lardons and some Asian barbecue sauce. All right, T, I have to be honest with you. I think out of everybody, you were the one that most represented the challenge. I have this big, beautiful piece of pork chop, and then I see these big, chunky, crispy bits of lardons. They're all sorts of awesome, okay? <laughs> Thank you. I think it was smart for you to take a few of those Brussels sprouts and put them in that deep fry to get some crispness on them because the ones that you had inside that cast iron kind of wilted down a little bit. So you can tell that you love pork chops. You can tell that you've had them a million times. These are correctly cooked pork chops. I think your seasoning, salt, pepper, cumin, you did a great balance there. Thank you. The bad thing that you did, you created that gastric and it, it did become a little thick, almost like honey. 
and it's kind of hard to eat. Unfortunately, this barbecue sauce, you have heavily added in sesame oil. <laughs> Very heavily. A tablespoon or two can actually overpower. That is how strong sesame oil can be. Yes, ma'am. Maybe I did too much, but hopefully the main elements of the dish they like. I really think Hayden's pork tenderloin out of this world. But I still go back to Taylor's. I think that out of everybody, she was the one that really hit a home run with capitalizing on the challenge that we gave her. I think Allison's coleslaw still one of the best <laughs> things. I would be proud to serve that coleslaw in my own joint. Spectacular. All right, so you guys think it's safe to, to kind of move forward with who we think is going to be champ? It's so hard. There's a case for every single one of them to win. Exactly. I'm so excited. Let's do this. Let's go. Guess we gotta go see who won the bacon. Yep. Let's see. Whew. I want to thank each and every one of you for giving us some delicious pork dishes. I mean, that's what we asked you all to do, and you all delivered. So thank you. You're welcome. You're welcome. No problem. <laughs> This was a really tight competition. Each one of you and your plates brought something special to the table today. All right, so there can only be one winner, right? Yes. It can be crowned this week's Kids Barbecue Champion. And of course, $10,000. This week's champion is gonna be Good job. Thank you. So proud job. of you all. Everybody. Well, thanks, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I am over the moon. I'm going shopping. I am so excited.